All right, everyone. Welcome back to the refill studio. Uh, let us refill to 99 as we always do. Get those cans ready. Uh, we're ready for the next set. Uh, I have the great pleasure and honor to invite uh, our two special guests for the studio today. Uh, we have Lang here who has three T10s, including um, events in Summer Zelia, the Hello Happy World Summer event, as well as very recently in the uh, Hello Happy World collab event, Oja Majo. And Neon, we also have him as well, um, also with a T10 title in the Pop and Party Railgun event. So uh, both of you, uh, thanks so much for taking the time to join us in the studio today. Thanks for inviting us. Yeah, thank you. Um, is there anything else uh, you'd like to add to, you know, introductions or anything I missed? Um, um, let's see. I have, I have four top tens, actually. Actually? Uh, okay. Yeah, you just got yeah. one. I just oh. got one. Oh, yes. The event that just happened. So oh, there nice. Go. Nice, nice. So you, you'll have to, to update that. Uh, the Twitter yeah, bio. <laughs> I did. I think I did that like a couple hours ago. Okay. But it's <laughs> Sorry um, about that. I must have missed it then. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> well, that's big. Congrats on that. That's a very recent Thank achievement. You. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Neon, uh, what about you? Did you do you have any secret T tens? I don't know. <laughs> no, but uh, both Lang and I, we just got our first song T one hundred, which is pretty cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. How, how how was that experience? It was quite interesting. Um, mm -hmm. I ended up scoring the highest out of people who didn't have optimal for this event. Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to see if I could go for T10, but it ended up that there were too many people that showed up with optimal. <laughs> uh, so I wasn't able to do all of the ops in order to break into the T10, but it was, it was still a lot of fun. Um, really cool to finally try song tearing for the first time. Oh, that's great. That's great to hear. That's good. Um, so again, both of you, uh, welcome to the, the studio. Uh, as we always do with our guests, I want to get a, get, a, get a sense of where, you know, the the origin story started in terms of how we got all into uh, to Bang Dream. Lang, we could start with you. How did you first get into Bang Dream Girls Band Party? Honestly, it was from one of my coworkers. Oh. Uh, yeah, Ooh. she... She's in pub. She, Maury, you know her. She's in CNC. Um, oh yeah. She's in CNC. She's in pub cord. Uh, she, first she showed me Love Live because I had already seen the anime, so mm -hmm. we would play it during like our lunch breaks and stuff. And then she showed me Bandery, but I hated it. <laughs> uh, so I deleted it. <laughs> but I am here now. So. <laughs> I wonder what uh, what uh, turned uh, flipped the switch there in terms of you know. Uh, I got so tired of Love Live. <laughs> I was like, what is this? I'm going back. F friendship with Love Live has ended. Now Bandy yeah. is my new best friend. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and what about you, uh, Neon? How, how did you get into Bandy? So you won't believe it, but it was actually from a YouTube ad that oh. I saw. <laughs> <laughs> you like we all play those ads in game to get like free uh flames and we always kind of joke about them but for some reason the ad that i saw that day just kind of pulled me in and i was like you know what let's let's try it i i think it was uh the event was what a wonderful world and i liked it a lot and ever since then bandori <laughs> Don't don't let all those uh, mobile ad uh, companies know that apparently they, what they do actually work. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's 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 really cool. That's that's really cool. That you know, very different sort of ways that we get into Bandari. And every time, I feel like it's always something new. It's always something uh, different. So it's really interesting to see how our guests um, get into the, the, the franchise. But. Uh, another thing I usually ask is like, you know, when you first got into the game, how, what was like your first sort of, you know, favorite characters or uh, or band and, and that change? Maybe Neon, we could start with you. Like, uh, did your favorite character or band change as as time went compared to your first impression? Yeah, um, I think I started off really liking Aya. Mm -hmm. um, she was just very perseverant and. Uh, very bubbly, and it kind of matched my personality. But as I got to know the other characters and also the other bands, um, I kind of switched towards 
Kanon and uh, Lisa as well. Obviously, I developed Kanon Bot, so you can see where the inspiration <laughs> came from that. Yeah. Um, but I think the thing that really kind of cemented that was when I tiered in, I think it was Smile Patrol. And I really got to see Hello Happy World for the first time. Um, Because I I had taken quite a few hiatuses as I slowly got into Bandori. Mm -hmm. Um, It was like playing events here and there. Um, So I didn't get to experience Hello Happy World until then. And I just really loved Kanon and her personality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, that's uh, that's definitely quite neat and you know how how things grow and, and it's very interesting obviously to see like you know how how people have shifted once they sort of get to know a little bit more about um the the characters and such and and lang uh, I, let me guess are you're also a, a hell happy world fan right yes i am uh <laughs> i am at the moment but i wasn't at the start mm. I, I actually i've never really thought about it but when I started, Rosalia grabbed me instantly. I mm. loved all their songs. I loved Rinko so much. And uh, I still do. She's really cute and she's awesome. But um, now, I, sh- I guess over time, I learned more about Rimi just as Neon did. And I mm-hmm. learned more about Misaki and I, I, I love them so much. <laughs> They're so wonderful. And mm. now... I'm on the Hello Happy World puppy patrain. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's great to hear. That's great to hear. So, you know, getting into the game is obviously one thing, being, you know, uh, fascinated by the series, by the characters, by the interactions and the bands. But getting into like a, a community setting and in particular, just, you know, learning how to tier for the game is is obviously a completely different story. So, Maybe maybe either one of you uh, could contribute, but uh, you know how how did it first start getting into sort of the community and in very in, in particular maybe let's first talk about um, the the CNC community which was already briefly <laughs> mentioned. How, how did that kind of start and how did you know you get in there? Oh gosh, how did CNC start? Um, well, Neon invited think- me to CNC, so he can. He can go on about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been there for quite a while now. I think we started the actual server um, all the way back in Molman. Um, it originally was just a small group with Ren and a couple of his friends. Mm-hmm. And he ended up uh, adding in a bunch of people over the next two events. So it was Molman and then Band Girls of the Dead. Um, and so I ended up getting invited and since then it's just been kind of curating and inviting people and creating a community, uh, that's very warm, welcoming and friendly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and yeah, I mean, uh, a previous guests have mentioned the community already, so definitely not, uh, uh, familiar, uh, like unfamiliar (laughs) territory for, for some of our, our frequent listeners and, and Lang, what was your first impression when you got invited and, and, and such? Uh, it was one of the later tiering servers that I did join Mm -hmm. or like community servers. And, um, I'd always felt like I hadn't really fit into any of them, but once I got into CNC, it it felt like it just clicked instantly and i mm. it's i don't oh. know how long it's been since that you know <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how long it's been since then but um i'm still talking there mm-hmm. that's great that's that's honestly amazing and you know uh, th- this community i find it so so great to to see that there's always like these always some part of the community that people can find some sort of sense of belonging and there's very different vast sort of it's so diverse this community with a lot of different representations and a lot of different parts of the franchise Mm -hmm. that people like and it's always great to see that you know there's always that one community within in mandarin that's always you know be able to to welcome people around so it's great that um you two were able to find uh cnc as a, a very suitable um home for for the for the two of you and and many other members there so um, that that's very great to hear, and um, I, I guess this sort of branches out to the ge- general question of you know why tiering. Like, uh, you know, it, it's very easy to just be like say, oh well, I'm a I'm a Lisa fan, or I'm a I'm a Misaki fan, and just call it a day. But what 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 convinced you to start tiering? And, and maybe we'll start with Lang here. Um, what 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 first sort of 
gave you that edge, that tiering was, was the thing that you wanted to do. Oh, did we lose Lang? Oh, we might have. Uh -oh. <laughs> I think we might have lost Lang. Lang. Come back. <laughs> can't leave me now. Uh, all right. Well, I guess uh, this is the first time we had some interesting technical difficulties. Well, Neon, why don't we go with you? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's start with you. Uh, how how did you get into tiering? Um. So the first time that I like oh. really put in. <laughs> Okay, we oh not here, Lang. Like, oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm Welcome sorry. Back. It's all good. It's all good. Well, we'll get Neon to talk, and then we'll we'll have you uh, add, add on to that after. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think the first time that I really got into tearing was Luminous once more. I think that's where some of my love for Aya comes from. Mm -hmm. um, but I was like, ah, oh, I guess I could put some time into this and try to get. Uh, one of those cool looking titles. Um, and I ended up getting T 2.5 K mm -hmm. um, for my first time, just kind of like doing it alone. Um, and I was like, this is, this was actually fun. Uh, and so I kind of laid door for a while, but eventually I tried to look in pub court and see like how I could get into the tiering scene. Cause I had seen people uh, like, talk about tiering T100 or like T10. And I was like, that sounds like it would be kind of cool to do, um, something that I could be proud of. And I, there were a couple of people uh, who were very gracious in kind of introducing me into the tiering scene um, and just getting into some of those first tiering servers. Um, that's how I ended up getting into the band Girls of the Dead server and meeting Ren and eventually getting into CNC. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of the whole start to actually being super involved in the community. Oh, no, again, it's all it's all about the connections and about you know, starting that you wanted to tier. And it's usually always that first spark, that first event that sort of realize, oh, well, this is not too bad. Why don't, why don't we uh, uh, try it out? And I think we got Lang back, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> what, what about you? What about you? How did you first start uh, getting into tiering? Um, well, I I had joined PubCord originally, mm -hmm. um, but at that time, I was only playing Bandori for Gotcha. Uh, mm. I had... I only saved stars since I started for ReZero collab. So I sparked that with only free stars because I had only saved up for that. Uh -huh. But then I was like, what if I kept throwing in stars and I got my first T1K? And I was like, that was really cool. And I have a really nice title. Oh my gosh. So, And then the Lost Toys event came out and it was the cutest title I've ever seen. I saw a lot of people agree that it's a really cute title. Um, and I said in 12 court, I was like, what if I T100 and then I don't know if you're familiar with Q Rumi. He was like, okay, I'll do it too. And then that was where it sparked. And then like 10 of us came together in pub court and we're VCing all day and all night trying to T100 for the first time. And that was when I got into the like hearing scenario, I guess. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. And, and, and uh, how, how, how did you uh, ended up uh, meeting Neon? It, it seemed like the events that you, you teared <laughs> were like completely different, but. Um... <laughs> we only really talked in pub court, I think. Oh, okay. And then, I yeah. Think, and I, right. I was looking for someone to room with and he was like, there's a room in CNC, you want to join? And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was all downhill from there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I never left. Well, well that's uh well that's well that's great. I, I've definitely heard of great things in terms of you know, pub court of course is a great place for people to start interacting with people yeah. and then um, you know, CNC. I've heard of some very uh very uh chaotic events that happen sometimes in the in that server but uh yeah <laughs> that's uh, that's amazing guys so again tiering was, was was definitely quite interesting and a great a very interesting way of how you get into i guess a, a different branch of the community and sort of testing your, your competitive skills and such which is um quite nice and um the one thing that i do want to expand a little bit more and maybe talk a little bit more about is like sort of you know both of your involvement within the community 
and sort of you know helping helping it grow and and nurture it. So uh, Lang, I know I, I was going to ask you about you know what you did in the recent event because in the recent uh, Pop and Party Valentine's event you did get T10 and yes. also I think you were one of the I think the the more active mods of the um, <laughs> the, the server as well. Yeah. <laughs> expecting that to be in everyone's letter but it was <laughs> uh, so so so, yeah. so how, how did that experience go like you know we, we could talk about your your, your tearing experience shortly but first of all like you know what 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 kind of convinced you that oh i'm gonna maybe mod a server and you know and, and and what what did you do in that in that experience that made people always remember that wow lang you were like the best mod ever <laughs> <laughs> honestly i don't i don't think i did anything out of the ordinary but um mm -hmm. uh our t1 who was our owner of the server did have to did take a break from the community mm -hmm. so the server was very unfinished and um the other mods weren't really saying anything so i was like are you i was like you should do this and this and this and then it just i kept just kept saying that so then i was like you know what do you want to just make me mod and then i'll do it so then they were like yeah sure <laughs> so <laughs> that was when i ended up just building the server into what it was and then i was just advocating for it all the time because it felt like my baby i guess because <laughs> it was like this thing that i created i don't know <laughs> but did you ever yeah. find it to be uh, something you would ever do? Like actually just, just straight up take over and actually mod a server and, uh, you know, that overall experience? I've definitely thought about it because I have moderated like servers in the past, mm -hmm. um, like not t Bandori servers, but mm -hmm. other types of servers. Mm -hmm. um, but it does get tiring. <laughs> I like tiering servers because they only last about a week and then I'm done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I can I can give the rules for that amount of time and then go to sleep. Uh, so I don't think I would do it for long term. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, hopefully it was a pretty fun experience. Uh, you know, I, I think overall uh, the server was pretty uh, well behaving, I, I, I imagine. And everyone was was good there. Uh, yeah. And I, I hope so. I did get help. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. And, um, you know, it's it's really cool to see how people evolve from just being, you know, a, a small member and maybe casually getting their like, oh, T top 2500 title or top 1000 title and and grow to actually be like, you know, a, a, top, a top tier, right? Getting yeah, T 10 yeah. titles and eventually be able to sort of give back to the community um and, and neon you you i think gave back in a very big way which was as you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier um building the the kanan bot so maybe for those listeners um out there who are for whatever reason not familiar with kanan bot um what does the kanan bot do yeah uh so kanan bot is essentially a uh discord bot that helps tiering servers uh, with various uh, like utilities and things that they do very often. So like changing the room name uh, whenever they're refilling. Um, there's options for putting up those efficiency guides and sort of like tiering guidelines um, that you'll typically see in the information part of a lot of tiering servers. Uh, there's the marina gift box calculator to help you calculate can returns um and a lot of what count and bot does is special for pub court specifically um with doing stuff like the quick links for what the current event is and right now with the whole android crashes we have a special category for that um, but it also runs our sort of back end with uh, how we keep track of strikes and how we send out mod mails. Um, and all of those also are available for other servers uh, to use. And uh, Wang is trying to remind me about the ability to track fillers now. <laughs> um, that's that's brand new. Uh, so basically, <laughs> yeah, uh, basically you can like right click on users um, in the chat and add them to this list of fillers so that way at the end um usually like you're really busy tearing so having somebody do that for you or just being able to really quickly right click and add that in um uh, is a really huge help so that's just some of what kind of can do 
Um, and hopefully I'll be able to keep adding on in the future. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I remember Neo when you when when the Kanan bot was first introduced. Uh, you know, you you talked to the whole bunch of people, myself included, on you know other features that could be added, and it's great to see that features are being slowly added. I did remember when Kanan bot was like mostly just like you know um, changing room code and such. But it really has uh, evolved since. Um, what 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 sort of inspired you to to make this this bot, and you know where where did you get these skills? these uh you know these skills to to build this <laughs> bot and and you know make it ha- make this uh this dream happen um so i think it originally started with being fascinated about lisa bot uh which josh uh runs and develops um i helped a little bit with him in figuring out how to do calculations for cutoff um estimates uh, locally since he had just been like scraping it off the site and that eventually evolved to, I kind of want to like be able to give back to the, um, general community and also all of the tiering people, um, that have helped me in the past. And so I started using the skills that I had, uh, to start coding. Um, I'm actually an architecture major, Mm -hmm. which is, Definitely not uh, in the realm of computer science, but I've always seen it as a hobby. And I took a lot of classes in high school uh, for computer science and eventually uh, learned how to code um, different languages. And that's what helped me code Kanembot. Mm. Wow. Wow. That's that's honestly quite fascinating. My, uh, I don't have any sort of uh you know computer science background like um if any of those any people in the ung academy discord server uh, which is the server i have um we have a uh, a bot in the the server that's actually uh made by my brother who is a, a comp sci uh major so uh he, he basically did most of the hard heavy lifting work and there's still obviously some, <laughs> some nuances there um you know I, I would love to learn you know stuff like uh you know comp sci stuff but that wasn't really my specialty, but now hearing from you, Neon, you aren't you aren't even uh, uh, a comp sci major either, and yet uh, you, you build something like this. It's like, hmm, maybe I could, you know, maybe put some put some work or put some effort into that. But you know, that's honestly yeah, so so steps. cool. It, it, it's so cool that uh, you're able to build this bot and has really helped um, many uh, servers. And, and I love how it, how it continues to grow and and develop. So. Um, Huge shout outs to that. Was there any like notable <laughs> notable stuff that that you know uh, throughout the development or in notable stories uh, as uh, Kanabot was slowly growing? Um definitely had some growing pains just trying to like <laughs> figure everything out for the first time. Um and I think <laughs> there's this actually one funny story. Um I was trying to code something for um the pub cord back end mm-hmm. and it kept pinging um all of the mods constantly and i couldn't <laughs> figure out why it was happening and i realized uh-huh. that i just made like a small typo somewhere and i was like i'm so sorry you had to deal with me because <laughs> before oh i was um yeah, before I became a mod for um, PubCord, uh, I was just interacting with them as a community contributor. So we have like our own uh, special channel, but I couldn't actually see any of the output that they were getting unless whatever was showing up in the console log. So I'd have to ask them a lot uh, and keep bugging them. Hey, can you can you try this real quick? Because <laughs> I, I can't try it for you. Um, but yeah, I, I think... Another big thing is just everybody from the community uh, giving suggestions um, and me being able to implement those suggestions. I think that's one of the best things to see just because you're, I'm actually getting like feedback from people and um, I'm able to make other people happy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, again, excellent work, Neon. Uh, we, we greatly appreciate all the all the work uh, you've done, and I'm sure uh, in the future you'll have a lot of uh, you know f- more implementation and, and and more features that Kanban will will continue to grow. 
Um, Hopefully. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if the top of your head, if you know exactly what you're going to do, or maybe even Lang knows. Uh, I know. know what I want him to do. Yeah. <laughs> Giveaway feature. Neon, I've been pinging you for months. I know. It's it's on it's on the top of the list, and I need to keep putting it off. I, I'll get her out to it. Thank you. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if there's going to... I'm not sure if it's already in there, but I'm not like uh, like an alarm function. Like, I know there's there, bots that does have alarm. There's a there, reminder. A reminder feature. Yes, I remember. I used, yeah, it, yeah, used it during the summer Hello Happy World. <laughs> Nice. So yeah, there's a lot of features out there. Um, I know, like we do use Kanon Bot, a lot of us out there, but uh, maybe not to the fullest potential. So you know, there's there's the potential still out there, and even more features are, are going to be um, implemented soon. So uh, of course, if you would like to make suggestions, any viewers out there want to make suggestions on you know what other features to add or even support uh, Kanon Bot, there'll be uh, links in the description below. So. Definitely yes, please send them in. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, it's Phil here. Hope you're enjoying the episode so far. The Refill Studio is now available on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Check us out on YouTube, but of course as well on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Be sure to subscribe so you're up to date with the latest episodes whenever they're released. And be sure to give ratings and comments and spread the word. All that engagement is greatly appreciated to spread the word about the Refill Studio podcast. Of course, special thanks to all my Filler Nation members who've been constantly supporting me and my content throughout this journey with the Refill Studio. So if you'd like to support the Refill Studio and my content and greatly appreciate it, consider joining by subscribing to my Twitch below or by joining my Patreon. Links in the description below and any support is greatly appreciated. We have a new sister channel. Um, you can check it out in the card above uh, where there's going to be exclusive content, including my Twitch VODs, as well as a sister project for the Refill Studio uh, that will be happening in the future. So definitely check it out and be sure to give a subscribe. And of course, feel free to join our Unga Academy Discord server where we have a fun, loving community, and interact with our members there, be able to contribute to the studio question that's featured in the podcast every week, and get to know a little bit more about our special guests featured in the podcast. So we hope to see you there. This episode will be resuming shortly. Let's uh let's move on to a, another topic, which will be actually the tiering experience, because I'm sure uh, the two of you have some uh, quite some <laughs> big <laughs> stories to talk about, your, yeah. you know, your, your tiering story. So I, I know, Lang, you have a lot because you've done quite a number of, of T10s. So yeah, can I can, can let's talk about how did you first you know, get your T10 because you've already talked about, you know, getting a whole bunch of people at PubCore to, you know, scam <laughs> them to work together to get top 100 together. Um, yeah. what, what about the T10? Where, where did that motivation start? And, and how, how did that first um, sort of, you know, achievement to get the T10 go? It started with my friend Maury, the one who introduced me to Bandori, actually. And mm -hmm. she was like, What if what if we ever tried a D10 though? And I was like, You're you're crazy. <laughs> like <laughs> we would have to never sleep or do anything. And she was like, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, okay, let's look at the titles, let's see what they are. And we found the cutest one. And it was the Hello Happy World Summer title. And I was like, What if we tiered it? And then she was like, Bet. But um the server the roster was actually full. That was when I learned about rosters. That was the mm -hmm. first tiering server I ever joined because I was like, does anyone know how to find the tiering server? Help me. And uh, I got it, but it was full. Um, and then a couple months later, way closer to the event, Ikuraz did uh, reach out to me and asked if I was still interested. And I was. So that was when I got into that. And then um, I, from then on, I had just... Um, I signed up for V-Day Poppy Pa when it came out on JP, but then my other two were just impulsive. Mm. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, again, I think one, one of the most interesting parts um, is that, you know, your your first experience of, of T10, again, was, I believe, the, I, I, if, if the order of the events are correct, it should be the Hello Happy World summer yes, event that was first that was right the first one. and then yeah. like literally right after summer after go and you you tiered yes. for that too <laughs> i i i uh 
there was like a eight day break between them though, because I had sniped Aglo on like day like on the last three days because it was really dead. So mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I, I got a good break. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. So h- how did that experience go? Because like not only this was like your first T10, it is a pretty <laughs> pretty crazy experience to do a back-to-back top 10. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, Summer Hello Happy World was crazy. There, <laughs> yeah. like, there, there, there were 15 of us going for it, and I had no idea what I was getting myself into. None of us did. Most of our roster was brand new. Um. So I spent a lot of days chugging energy drinks, sticking my face in ice water, uh, just <laughs> falling asleep while I'm tapping a Tuesday. Uh, it was, it's very not a glamorous experience. <laughs> um, but when you look back on it, you th- you just remember all the happy memories. And it, it's just, it's such a wonderful thing to attach it to this little medal that I have on my game. And just, I have pride in it. <laughs> Uh, and then it was really, it was an interesting experience deciding to cheer the next event. Uh, I kept saying I'm going to snipe it and people would tell me to do it. Um, and I felt like I was crazy and it was super expensive and it was tiring (laughs) (laughs) and I was just really tired, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but it was honestly, it was really fun. And that was a really fun event as well. And it's really cute to have these really nice little summer titles next to each other. Um, and I, I, th- I do think I would do it again. Back to back tiering is kind of kind of fun to say something that you have done, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. but I wouldn't really recommend it. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're especially if let's say that you know if and Ian Dory sort of screws you over with the schedule, like maybe they make one event like. Oh, oops, 11 days yeah. long, and then the other ones Oopsie. like another six seven six seven <laughs> days long. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's really honestly incredible that you're able to get that literally on, on, on you know, your first sort of T10 <laughs> like experience. And, um, Thank you. you know, trying to, I think it sort of is a bit of a momentum, like you were probably so numb from, you know, <laughs> the yeah, experience definitely. from Hella Happy World Summer and uh, people like um, Useless Garbage, shout outs to him uh, and, oh, and, and uh, you know, chasing. Um, and then like, you know, you're just so numb going into like, you know, yeah. summer glow that you're like I, I could do this it's you know we, we could take care it of it it felt like it felt like a, a t1k honestly <laughs> it was it was really easy okay. well that, that's good I, i'd imagine that you know um i think just looking at the the, the, the events you've had i i think how happy world summer was was probably the hardest out of all of them Definitely. by far yeah. yeah not only being your first but just how yeah. crazy competitive it, it was. It wasn't so. as hard as Railgun, though, so I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could talk about Railgun literally right now, Neon, because, you know, you, just like Lang, uh, also did a, a T10 of a very, very competitive, very um, resource-heavy. I'm not going to say expensive because some people you know when it comes to maybe expensive in terms of like stars but you know some people might have mm-hmm. you know stars saved up already and and whatnot i'm not going to judge but uh, <laughs> well, what, did, uh, what did that railgun experience felt to you in terms of your your, your competitive uh t10 there it was quite wild mm-hmm. um i mean it happened over the july 4th uh weekend so there was the element of wanting to, you know, celebrate a holiday, um, but also realizing that this is a collab event, which is typically quite competitive. Um, and then there was also the fact that I was expecting it to be around seven days, um, mm-hmm. but then finding out that it was 10 days, um, that really threw a wrench in my plans. And I had to make sure that I paced myself early on, uh, high enough so that I could take the time in the latter half of the event to actually like go to work. Um, cause I didn't have that many vacation days. Um, and obviously at the end of the event, there was the whole, uh, merging of the servers and, um, trying to make sure that Aqua got T10, um, against our pub competitor. Uh, so that was, that was quite wild. Mm-hmm. Um, I think my roommate said, uh, after I finished the event and like came out of my room again, uh, that I looked 
white as a sheet. Oh, so. no. <laughs> how, how many hours did you put like every day in, in that? Because again, I, I don't remember what place exactly you got, but uh, well, how was the hours? Um, I, I got fifth place. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to say that I put in close to maybe 18 hours mm-hmm. per day. Uh, the first 24 hour chunk, uh, was done. And then I would basically sleep for like three hours, which is two sleep cycles. Um, that's, that's one thing that I learned. If you sleep in 90 minute sleep cycles, it's easier to wake up even when you haven't gotten enough sleep yet. So (laughs) there's, there's a tearing tip. Um, but yeah, I would sleep for like three hours and then I just go the next, um, like 18, 24 hours and then sleep three hours again. Crazy. Uh, absolutely crazy. Um, I don't know. I, I, like, uh, just quickly jumping back to Lang uh, before we continue your story, Neon. Was that like a similar sleep schedule to yours with uh, Hell Happy Summer? Like, was it that like I, crazy? I spent like the first five days out of T10 just switching with useless garbage over and over and over. Because mm. uh, I, I, I I am a big sleeper. I I tend to sleep 12 hours a night and then take four hour naps a day. Uh, <laughs> so that makes it hard to cheer. So that um, is why I, I mostly had a difficult time. But my days were average 16 to 17 hours again. Yeah. That that must never never 24. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, crazy. Like, you know, I have to kind of sw- completely sw- switch your sleep schedule in order to, yeah. to accommodate that. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah, that's that. I think that's probably one of the the most difficult parts of of, of tiering, where like like the time management thing is is so Definitely. so so difficult. Like oh, you could yeah. you could be managing work, you could be managing school. A lot of people even ask me like the newer tiers, like how do you manage school with uh, you know with yeah. tiering and you know it, it's a it's a learning process, right? You know, obviously school and and work and stuff is is more important, but you know once you kind of get those priorities straight, then yeah. you know you basically spend the rest tiering and. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, what about sleep? Uh, what sleep? <laughs> yeah, no sleep. No sleep yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. So, so Neon, going back to you, like, you know, you, I think going into tearing Poppy pa, Railgun, I think you knew it was going to be really competitive. But what what motivated you? What what convinced you that, you know, you really wanted to tear this particular event? So, Railgun was the first anime that I ever watched um and it was what got me into anime in the first place Mm. so since i had gotten into the bandoria community and then saw this collab show up i was like all right i i know this for a fact this is going to be the one t10 that i do i'm going to make it my first and just go for it um and it's i just really love the fact that the two things that i am like really involved in and like came together for a collab yeah yeah for sure for sure and this was also your first t10 too so i imagine you were you know there was a lot of maybe planning involved maybe a little bit of of stress beforehand before an event started maybe a little bit um i had previous experience in kind of tearing a little bit on the high side for t100s mm-hmm. um like my first t100 which was band girls of the dead i think i was like t20 um because i was helping track uh t11 snipers and whatnot mm-hmm. uh, so i already knew that i had sort of the tenacity to do it and also being an architecture major Um, I'm used to having quite long periods of time, like up doing work, um, kind of just on the grind. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't too worried, but I, there was definitely preparation with like my schedule and trying to make sure that I meal prep beforehand and also just trying to coordinate, um, the whole server and, um, everybody in it. But it, it was fun. Yeah, definitely. And, and that's what that's what really matters with tearing, you know, um, the experience For you sure. get uh, working with others and playing with others and trying to make it an enjoyable experience, whether it's just, you know, tearing with other people very high, uh, perhaps 
um, you know, making sure that the server is run smoothly, you know, Neon with your experience with, you know, uh, just in general with PubCord and Lang with your most recent experience as well, modding and tiering at the same time. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really, it's really cool. So, um, big props to you, you, you two on, on those achievements. Um, it's, it's Thank funny. You. I just had a quick Thanks. check. I just quickly checked and, uh, we are all in this group. We are all, uh, T5 havers. We all have a T5 oh, title. So. Oh my god. Nice. And it's, so. and it's like and it's like kind of like a roughly around the same time. So Neon, your your pop and uh event was again near the American Day uh Thanksgiving um or sorry, not Thanksgiving. Uh <laughs> July 4th day. <laughs> and uh two events after it was Summer Glow uh Summer oh, Glow nice. uh, and then literally the event right after Summer Glow was my my T5 in the uh, Melody of the Dignified Wind. So Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, so we're all so cool. cool. Yeah, we're all we're all cool <laughs> T five havers. So um, anyone five, five, who wants five. to to join the T five uh, train, uh, yeah, T five Cool Club, uh, you know, just get ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lang, before we you know we we wrap up talking about some tiering experiences, Lang, again, you've you've tiered four events now, and um, you know uh, you have the Ojamajo event as well, and then of course the uh, the most recent uh, Valentine's wasn't. Uh, built in a day event uh, any notable sort of memories or experiences from those events while while tiering Dorimi was so fun Dorimi was when I got got to meet um, a new tiering friend Kay uh, mm. and I'm going to be tiering with her a lot in the future um, and we spend a lot of time VCing while I tier now so that was really nice mm. and to grow more in the community it was also the first time I ever tiered with snips and I am always against Snips in every event. We always hear the same event. <laughs> Snips and I were both the only Risa Mi- uh, Misa Rimi shippers that I know. Okay. Uh, and we both feel the same way. And we both just recently talked about this. And so it's really cool getting to know him and cheer with him for once instead of against him. Okay. Well, that, well, that's that's honestly, that's amazing. The fact that, you know... I think what's also really fascinating is when you have like instances where you have like rivals and you know yeah. you, when you're when you're competing against each other in one server, but in like in another server, maybe even just a few events later, you're not working together. It's yeah. like it, it's really it's really cool. And you also mentioned about like you know even in or or, or Neon mentioned as well, like when um, uh, Pop and Party they they the the two uh, railgun servers merged in order to mm. you know support each other and and help each other. It's uh it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty neat for sure um i'm not sure if uh lang you'll be because snips is a pretty uh you know uh, pretty big figure i'm not sure i i I think i I think you might be on the other side again um in this upcoming event yeah i am in buddy buddy (laughs) (laughs) very soon very soon so you know not not friends for a lot much longer more more rival competition once more so we were just comped in Valpipa again, actually. So oh wow, that's crazy. When, yeah. what, what about um? You're not tearing like Nico Nico Connect too much, right? Or I'm thinking about it. Oh okay. I'm thinking about it. Oh whale well, thoughts. Know. Wait, what is well, Wait, what is this? Is this the leaked back to back um <laughs> T10 for Lang again? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see how it looks on like day three, and then I'll think about it. Okay. Well, we'll see how things go. But uh, before we before we move on to a, another topic, um, I think one of our our listeners uh, wanted Neon uh, you to. Uh, to mention a particular <laughs> thing that happened in your event. Uh, I, I don't have yes. any context to it, but uh, what is this Twitter okay. thread? <laughs> okay, so um, during Railgun, mm-hmm. we would basically have VC up like almost 24-7. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what I would have done without them. Probably have gone insane. Uh but they were a great group of people. Q was there. Um, and essentially this railgun Twitter thread is just a compilation of absolutely absurd out of context quotes from anybody who was talking in there. Um, and we just compiled the entire list. And then at the end of the event, we went back and read through all of them. Uh, it's a wild time. <laughs> it's somewhere on my Twitter. Uh, if you want to find it and oh, no. uh, add it to the description so people can see it afterwards. Oh, no. 
This is this is the dark side of tearing that people don't talk about. <laughs> all the hallucinations the that you get, yeah, yeah the sleep oh, deprivation, yeah, yeah. all that fun stuff. But you hallucinate a lot. Oh, it, right there. Oh, no. It's it's worth it. It's it's worth it. I guess for a lot of people, it's worth it because at the end of the day, you get a like you know uh, as as Lang mentioned, like a like so, nice nice shiny sort of title, a, a sort of medal of sorts <laughs> to um to to indicate or show that you've done well and. Uh, Again, the experience of tearing with people, regardless of you know how all the hours you have to put in, it's it's definitely a fun and um, good experience. And yep. we have some uh, some quotes out of context. I'm not sure if uh, yeah. they're going to be appropriate for me to post on the podcast uh, on the <laughs> on the editing part, right on the actual video. But uh, you know, I'll, I'll have a I'll have this uh, in uh, maybe in the the description as well. If people could. Uh, um, could see what happens if you if you tear for too long so yeah get a little insight <laughs> get a little insight of what uh, a sleep deprivation brain feels like <laughs> I, i'm sure neither of you ever imagined that that was going to be a thing that would happen be like oh you're so sleep deprived that you would start like saying yeah. random like random <laughs> bullcrap and like <laughs> and then like all this stuff would happen yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's like while it's happening it feels like it's not real you feel like you're dreaming but again it's all worth it it's all for showing your dedication for either particular character particular band or maybe it's even title that you like so um yeah so again big props to you two for some amazing achievements and thank you again for sharing some Stories, both great, inspirational, and questionable. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, before we wrap up the podcast, I do want to talk about the studio question um, on our Discord. Um, this is why I was talking quite a bit about titles, because the studio question I asked our, um, our uh, Discord members in the Young Academy Discord server is which Bandari event, in your opinion, has the prettiest event title? Oh, um, a good question for me. Question. Yeah, so, so <laughs> I, it's funny me. because I wanted to ask this question because I know that Neon, not only because you know, this is a very interesting question in, in itself, but Neon, I know you have maybe a few gripes here and there with some of the uh the ian dory uh, and how they handle the the title uh localization from the the jp version yeah um <laughs> i have a big graphic design background uh -huh. so sometimes uh looking at the en titles is akin to physical pain <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah, this, this is a hard question. That's 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 a pretty because I think for you it'd be very difficult because your opinion on them is not like you know uh, incredibly <laughs> high for many of them. I, I'm gonna list some of these uh, some of the uh, uh, the titles that many of our server members have have mentioned on on the video. We have quite a few. Like um, someone has mentioned they do like Buddy X Buddy, which we've talked about earlier. Um, that's a good one. Hagami good one. and the Happy Dinosaur. We have one uh... there. Um, but uh, that's JP, right? One. So we don't know if Ian Dory is going to ruin it. <laughs> I hope not. I'm, I hope not. Yeah. So I know uh, for a fact they're going to ruin Buddy X Buddy. I'm be so <laughs> no, sad. No, no, no. How have would they ruin the, it though? Have you seen the Taiwanese version? It's in English. It's it's kind of it's kind of like. Rough. Are they going to write it in like? <laughs> are they going to like for an English server going to write it in like French or like Punjabi or something? Like I don't think it's going to get. Oh that no, bad, Neon right? is so picky. <laughs> <laughs> I I think my first time when I saw you like actively criticizing the um uh the the art style of the localization of the banners was uh my own texture. Oh, that was like oh, definitely yeah. pretty <laughs> jarring to see, and oh. like you know seeing the the fan made one, I was like, yeah. It, it it really could have just been like as easy as just doing something as simple as that. It's like, yeah, but yeah, let's not even talk about Psy Beyond the Rain. <laughs> you hate <laughs> so much. <laughs> the font choice. <laughs> oh man, oh man. But yeah, there's a there's a couple of uh, very interesting um uh options that are sort of uh lists or or titles that our, our members have have mentioned. Um even like Pop and Halloween Parade, Lost Toys Dream was one too. I think Lost Toys was actually really good. Yeah, so cute. Yeah, mm -hmm. such a good one. Uh, like you didn't answer my question, so uh, do you have a particular uh, title you like? 
I really love the cute ones. <laughs> um, I really <laughs> like I really like Band Girls of the Dead just because Misa Rimi. Mm-hmm. Um, I also love Lost Toys, as was mentioned. Um, I really like Blossoming Symphony. IT100 just for that title. It was really cute. Mm. Okay. And Summer Colored Sunshine Days. Ah, that one was so cute too. I just love the cute ones. <laughs> <laughs> I think they do definitely do the cute ones a little bit better than some of the more like sophisticated ones. Definitely. But, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Neon, I, I know I, I gave you a lot of time to think about it. Do you have an yeah, answer to this? <laughs> I think my favorite, um, it would be Fly With The Night. Uh, mm. That's Morphonica's second band story. It's just, it's so elegant and like beautiful and it's done right. Also, it's in English, so there's no way you can mess <laughs> it up. <laughs> It's perfect. Well, yeah, there's there shouldn't be a way to mess it up. Let's hope, right? Let's let's hope that they <laughs> uh, don't don't mess it up. I, I don't recall. There might have been some that were like, um, like I remember, like I, I remember one of the titles. I think it was Prismatic Duo, where I thought it was gonna look very like similar, but I think it was slightly different. Um, let me check real quick. Um, Duo was thinner than I oh yeah, well, Prismatic Duo. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's in uh, Katakana instead of. Uh, english in, in the jp version yeah it looks it looks a bit different but uh, nothing too too crazy but yeah you know maybe the hope later in the future uh neon you'll have uh more pe- <laughs> more uh events to or titles to to pick on you'll be like oh this is bad and <laughs> you'll, 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 you'll show uh ian Dari their place <laughs> in the future Let, let's hope that they actually you know improve but i feel like in, in the future we'll definitely see one of your new your uh, fan made ones that uh, uh, will uh, will show up one day or another. So looking oh, forward for to sure. that when that happens. <laughs> is there? Oh yeah. By the way, Neon, is there one particular one that you like real, are like pretty proud of in terms of like your your fan made title? Um, I would have to say it's the Buddy X Buddy mm-hmm. title or the Hello Happy World Summer banner that I did. Mm-hmm. Those nice. are quite nice. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, let, let's hope that, uh, you know, we don't, we don't have to see your work. Obviously your work will be great. We would love to see your work, but if Ian Dory could make sure that things look, you know, uh, at least somewhat <laughs> presentable, then, uh, we don't have to worry <laughs> about, um, people complaining about maybe on not so pretty, uh, titles in the future. But again, Credits where it's due, there are still a lot of great titles out there. And of course, even the fan made ones are all very, very great. So, um, yeah. So, um, before we end off uh, our podcast, I just want to give you to the opportunity to give any shout outs or, or talk about any future events that, uh, that you'll be tiering. Uh, maybe Lang will start with you. Any future events other than Cough Cough Nico Nico Connect? Um, any other future <laughs> events in mind? Maybe. Um, yeah. So next, I'm going to be tiering Buddy X Buddy. Uh, I'm only going for T10, but we do have a podium roster going right now. So we would love the support, especially because there is a snips with a <laughs> there's snips. He has a he has a server, and we're scared of him a little bit. Uh, <laughs> and then after that, I'm hopefully going for my first podium attempt in Hagumi's Hello Happy Hello Hagumi's Dinosaur. Yeah, Hagumi and the Happy Dinosaur, Ooh. yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I have a server for that um, as well. Okay, well, well, all the best. That's going to be a, a very a great achievement if that happens. Getting a podium title is uh, yeah. definitely not... Uh, it's not it's not gonna be easy but it definitely is gonna be the most well, very rewarding so you know you all the support to you lang all the Thank best you. in that uh neon what about you are you going to uh tier any events in the future are you gonna be more of a behind the scenes kind of guy i'll probably stick to more behind the scenes but expect to see me try to get a couple uh song tiering attempts in mm-hmm. um i might think about fly with the night just because i really love that title mm-hmm. um but we'll we'll see what happens in the future do you think uh a, a t10 song tiering would, would happen in the future i i can hope and dream well <laughs> you know like for instance with gotcha the, looks down yeah i mean you know for instance with fly at the night that's a that's a morph event so i imagine you might have to do a little bit of extra 
extra <laughs> scouting for that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. Well, we'll see. We'll yeah, see, we'll unfortunately. See. Okay, okay. Well, before we go, um, it, it was great uh, pleasure to have you two on. Um, I guess uh, maybe just a, a few other questions or maybe other small things. Uh, how how, uh, how whale are, are, are either of you? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. I'm just seeing I'm just seeing all the whale emojis and like hmm. hmm. Both uh, are massive whales, about, that's what they say. <laughs> I'm, okay, I don't know much about Vandori, but if if we want to talk about Genshin, um, oh. I I will have to confess that I am a, a whale. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> that's not good. And and Lang uh, uh you know those back-to-back t10s yeah uh, i i kind of started hello happy world summer with 300 stars so oh yeah okay <laughs> we'll, we'll, really we'll end it there we'll end it there we'll, we'll, we'll not fur- further <laughs> uh you know dwell into that that's a uh, okay <laughs> but honestly you two thanks so much for for joining um any any last uh you know shout outs to you know any people around or any last words to people who are viewers out there shout out to my best events <laughs> that's oh that's all i'm giving them <laughs> uh, <laughs> i'm gonna shout out phil because thank you for inviting me here and i had a really fun time oh well you're, yeah, you're welcome thank you so much yeah <laughs> It was a great pleasure. Really fun. It was a great pleasure having the two of you on and, and be able to share all the stories and all the unique experiences you've had within the community, within tiering and, and many more. So uh, maybe we'll leave off with one notable thing that uh, you know about um, each other. So maybe Neon, just one, if you have like one sentence to describe Lang to our viewers who, who are, you know, oh, um, no. <laughs> who, who are like, okay, like, okay, now I kind of know what who Lang is, but like, you know, to summarize. Lang really, really, really loves pepper. No. Like, an what? absurd amount. Oh, no. What the heck? That's not we, true. We call though. her Pepper Girl. We I, call her Pepper Girl in uh, CNC. Uh, that's an awful introduction. <laughs> or a summary, like all this experience, like, oh, like, look at me. I'm so like, what an accomplished tier I am. And then we're ending off with, you know, your your final lasting impression is Lang's a pepper. Okay. Okay. Lang, you, you have the floor now. If you were to summarize Neon in one sentence, what would it be? Um, well, Neon is nice to you unless your name is Lang. So if your name isn't Lang, then you'll have a very nice time talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was your opportunity to call him like something else. Like, uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, I mean, Lang- <laughs> <laughs> but I guess Lang is Lang is too nice of a person. And, you know, I'm yeah, not, unlike a wonderful makes- person. <laughs> unlike <super> Neon. <laughs> <laughs> unlike unlike peppers that you know the spicy ones that make everyone cry but uh you know man lying in person maybe is a very nice person so yeah see i'm really nice for sure you, you are you are you're really nice and i'm really glad to have you as a friend oh my god <laughs> stop stop <laughs> honestly you two it has been a great pleasure having you and again for those who are listening to this podcast uh feel free to give a follow follow them on on social media their their links are in description below uh you can learn as well on how to contact them and you know if you want to tier with them in the future um or perhaps do other things like suggest uh any suggestions for the kanan bot uh, of course uh they are open to communication so um they appreciate all the support that you guys will give either through uh tiering or, or or behind the scenes action so um with that out of the way, um, thank you all so much for listening. Uh, this is your host, SB Philos4, uh, signing out with the Refill Studio podcast. Our set has been complete. Uh, make sure you get your cans ready as we will refill for uh, the next set in the future. But until then, uh, don't forget to check us out on your favorite uh, podcast uh, episode sort of uh, provider of any sort on Spotify, Apple, or, or Google. And of course, uh, check out our Under Academy Discord server as well. So. Take care, everyone. We'll see you all in the next set. Bye.
拜拜。Bye bye bye bye